Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, uh, I'd like to uh, do some simulation uh, to Whitstone Bridge circuit, a very important circuit in the context of uh, measurement and uh, instrumentation uh, using the, uh, the software automation studio. But before that, uh, this is uh, just a, a sort of summarize what I will try to simulate. So this is the Whitstone Bridge. Basically, you have a voltage supply. Okay. And you have two legs. The first one cons uh, consists of R1 in series with R2. The second one is R3 in series with R4. So this is the first leg and this is the second leg. And we measure the voltage V output between point C and, and D. Now, the Whitstone bridge runs under two different conditions. The first one we call the balance conditions when R1 over R2 equal to R3 over R4. And this will result that the V output is equal to zero. And that's what we call the balance condition. Now, if R1 over R2 doesn't equal to R3 over R4, then we will have this formula for V out in terms of Vs, R1, R2, R3, and R4. Now, how these formulas come from what? From where? Uh, why, when we have this condition V out equal to zero, when, when the condition doesn't satisfy V out is equal to this, I will leave to you in the description the derivation videos for those formulas. Plus, I will also leave a couple of experiments uh, for the Whitstone Bridge. But now, uh, let me take you to the simulation and let's simulate uh, some, some cases now. So that is the Whitstone Bridge. This is the first leg. This is the second leg. Okay, and the ratio in the first leg is one. The second leg is also one. 120 over 120 is one. 100 over 100 is equal to one. So let me run the simulation now. So that is the balance condition. So we expect to see that the output voltage basically will equal to zero. So it is between this point and that point, and it's equal to zero. Okay, so that is the balance condition. Now I will do a very little bit change here and I will change what was R1 which is 20 ohm I will just increase it by instead of 120 to 120.1 so a very little increase in the resistance and let me run the simulation and let me do the measurement now measure the voltage between the same two points and you notice that the voltage now is not zero anymore it's a negative two millivolt a small voltage, yes, but it is something is different than zero. So we have a negative voltage. Now, what will happen if I reduce the resistance, but by exactly the same value? So instead of 120.1, it is 119.9. So I reduce the voltage by 0.1. Let me run the simulation here. Let me do the measurement. And the voltage here will be equal to plus two millivolt. Now, if you use the formula that I showed to you here, and you plug in the values here, you will see that when R1 increases related to the other resistors, this will be equal to a negative number. When it is reduced, it will be a, a positive, a positive number. So that is the explanation of this. Now, why this circuit is important? We use the Whitstone Bridge, one of the application of it is uh, we use it with resistive sensors. Let's take an example, the strain gauge. A typical value of the strain gauge is 120 ohm. So if we have, let's say R1 is the strain gauge, the rest are the same resistor as we have here, and there is no force applied to the strain gauge, then we have a balanced condition and V out will be equal to zero. Now, if you apply a tensile force on the strain gauge, this resistance will increase, but it will not increase to a very high value, to a small value like a 0.1 ohm. If you apply a compression force, then you will have basically a small reduction in the resistance. Now, that change in the resistance due to the force is reflected as a change in the voltage. So basically, the Whitstone bridge is used to change, to convert the change of the resistance of the strain gauge 
into a change in the voltage. Why? Because it's much easier to measure a voltage in a circuit continuously using, for example, a data acquisition than measuring the change in the resistance. 